Now I'm really into cross stitching and so I wanted to make a video about how it all works. I usually want to buy kits just like this and this is my favorite brand. The Gold Collection by Dimensions. I just bought it on Amazon and this is the Japanese garden. And what comes inside of this kit is a bunch of strings and it's kind of a mess. But all of these strings are coded by numbers and each color is a different number. Also inside this kit is a key and what I like to do is put this on my wall so I can see everything. And as you can see, the numbers according to the colors are listed right here. And it pairs up with these symbols. And all these symbols correlate to all the symbols on this map that you see. And this is what the final picture will look like. And up here, you can see that there are two different types of stitches. One of them is a cross stitch and the other is a half cross stitch. And then down here, there are the back stitches and also cording, which I will show you later. So this finished product is going to be 16 inches by 12 inches. And at first it may be a little overwhelming. Here you can see the black triangle marks the center of the entire cross stitch. And they also have it on the left and right sides right here. So right here where the intersect is the, should be the center of the cross stitch. So I've already worked on this cross stitch for like two weeks. And this is the fabric that comes with the kit. It's this big piece of fabric. And it's like sort of bluish. Um, so what you also need is an embroidery ring. And you can get this at any um, craft store for like a dollar or so. And the size that I'm using is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inches? Eight, eight inches across? Inches across. Just a small little circle. So if you pretend that this was a blank sheet of cross stitch fabric, what I did at the beginning was that I would fold it in half and then in half again so that I would be able to find the center, assuming that this sheet is big enough for the whole cross stitch. And so the center would be right here. So that's where I usually start. As you can see, this is what I have so far after two weeks. And you can see the center of my cross stitch is about right there. And that correlates with the center of this map. With cross stitching, you don't really need a lot of tools. So the way you use this is that you loosen up this top little screw thing and then you take the inside of the circle and you put it underneath your fabric right underneath of where you want to work and then you place this top ring on top and then you kind of just push it together and then you want to tighten your fabric so that it's nice and taut and then you can tighten the screw and then keep pulling the fabric so it's even on all sides. And there you go! So this cross stitching kit also comes with a needle, but it's a very blunt needle so you don't have to worry about poking yourself because it doesn't hurt. Let's say I want to work on this area right here. And you can see that it's next to this little um, lantern object. I like working on the objects first because it looks like it's more easier to reference. And so you look, you find this lantern on the map and then you look for the symbol that you need. So I'm looking for the symbol that is the square with the diagonal slash on it. And then here I look at the legend and then I try to find that slash. And here it says two strings, dark olive green, 16270. And it's in this first column that means it's a cross stitch and not a half stitch. And in my pile of strings is this one, 16270, the dark olive green, so that is the correct one. So you just take one out like so. Just pull it out like this. What I like to do is I actually lick this end, just like, to just wet it so it makes it easier to poke through the hole in the needle. And all you do is poke it through. Alright, so you just poke it through 
like this and then you basically pull the ends together and since on the legend it says two strings well this makes two strings and this is how you tie the ends together so that it becomes a knot I learned this trick from my mom so you want to pinch the two ends together with your index finger and thumb and then you wrap it around your index finger once and what you do is you roll you roll your thumb and index finger together and you roll it and then you kind of release your index finger from this loop like this and then you grab where the twisty thing is and you kind of just pull it and it becomes a knot. Stitching is kind of like a coloring book. You're just filling up the squares with colors but instead of markers or colored pencils, you're using string. And here, I want to make four dark olive green squares right here. You want to start from the bottom up so the knot doesn't show on the top. So you kind of reach your hand underneath the ring and then you try to find your way to poke up on the farthest square to the left that you want to color in. So you stick your needle up and pull up. And since it's on a row, you can just make diagonal to the right first. This is what I do. Just diagonal to the right. So what I'm making right now is a half stitch. Since this is supposed to be a cross stitch, you want to go four diagonal from left to right, and then you start from this bottom square to do right to left. So that makes it a cross stitch. And this is really meditative. I usually do this a lot faster, but I'm trying to, I'm holding a camera between my knees. All right, there you have it. Cross stitch, that is four across. There, it's a cross stitch. And you just keep doing this forever. So the other kind of stitch is the back stitch. And that one's pretty easy, you just follow the outline of the picture. And this is a one string back stitch. So instead of making a knot on both ends of the string by like pulling it together, you're only making a knot on one of the strings, on one of the ends. And then you just let the other the other end hang loose. And then you'll get something like this. Or like this. Pretty simple. Oh, and this is what the back looks like so far. It's kind of messy. I didn't want to be too OCD about it. Lastly, I wanted to demonstrate the cord kind of stitch. I haven't gotten to that stitch yet, but basically what you do is you just grab your string attached to something, it doesn't have to be this, and then you just twist it. You just twist it forever. Just twist it a lot until it's very twisted. And it's attached to the needle right now, right here. And once you have it really twisted, you want to grab the center of the string and then you kind of pull it up and then put the strings together and then just let go and then it kind of becomes like this double twisty thing and that is the cord and you can even twist it a little more and so you see that it's kind of like a thick twist and this is what you use to make some of the outlines it's kind of like a back stitch but like a twisty string back stitch I don't know if that makes sense but I'm not there yet so my last cross stitch about this size, it took me about three months, but yeah, I don't know how long this one will take me. So that's it. That's my little, my little summary of my cross stitching copy.